Hello again, welcome back. This is another video. Um, this is one of the ones I'm going to butcher our filmmaker's name. So here it goes, it's Jafar Panhahi. It's, it's obviously wrong. Um, he made the circle, uh, he's under house arrest and uh, the film I covered last week, this is not a film, covered his house arrest. This is another film we did, uh, Taxi Tehran, which was made after This Is Not A Film. Um, it covers, this is his, one of his ways to get around not being allowed to film anything, which was, was he got some actors who had come in out of his taxi and actors after a taxi, um, like as if they were customers and they would enact sequences and scenes <laughs> in the taxi going through a day and it would show you the life of people in Tehran in Iran I mean and in Tehran in Iran uh it's been a long day and uh, so basically it's all about life in his country and uh, it's showing you through the idea of sticking this taxi and the taxi being going through Tehran and showing and seeing life but you're all stuck within this taxi so people come to it, people leave the taxi but it's, it's always based in the taxi so he's the taxi driver some people apparently recognise him, some people don't he picks up people and they either argue with each other or they talk to him but it shows you a sense of what the lives are like for people in this city. So he starts off with uh, two different people who come into his taxi. One's um, pretty much a traditionalist, uh, you know, and another one, he's like this guy, and he um, basically he would have anyone who was criminal get the worst possible treatment. And then he, he's also, there's also this woman who's a teacher who's very liberal and very much reformist and those two are arguing with each other and you're seeing two different points of view in the country, like two very, very incompatible points of view. But, you, but the film lets the play out as if two people have an argument in a taxi. And it gets the point across of where the divide is in this country and the, those two people with very different points of view how the country should go. Then they leave the taxi and he's in a, in a taxi with a, this kind of ca this character who's a bit dodgy. He's, Kind of part of the underworld, he's, he's selling like um, dodgy um, pirated films, which obviously ties into uh, Jafar's um, profession, and he's delivering these films to different people, and a lot of them are films you can't get in Iran, they're just banned, so he can't, so he's like supplying them to like film students and things, so, he, so they go to this location, find this film student who recognises the filmmaker and knows about his plight and asks his advice, what's a good film, what's a bad film? Well how would you make a film? How do you find how do you find subject matters? So he talks to this guy, then as he's leaving he has to get, give these two women a lift, they have to get to a location. But everything goes wrong and uh, he has to move to another taxi because he has to go and pick up his niece who's uh, coming from school. Picks her up, she she gives him um Lots of grief because she's like 12 and she's a know-it-all and she's a filmmaker and um, that interaction is really fun because so I've got a niece at that age and um, anybody who's her uncle, it strikes very true to me, to my relationship with her as well where, you know, they're telling you off for everything you do wrong and, you know, um, they're telling you how everyone else thinks you're an idiot and you're, you can't do anything right. But they're secretly really fond of you, but it's kind of like they're not gonna admit it. <laughs> that really strikes through to me. And she's a member from the rest of the film as he goes round and he meets her old friend from an old neighbourhood who's having problems. But if he reports people who are causing the problems, they might get arrested and dealt with severely and he knows the reasons why they're causing problems are very human. It's like what do you do? It's like you you know who the people causing the problems are, but if you complain about them, they, they can suffer consequences way above what the situation demands. So he has to talk to his friend about that. And then he's also still having his niece in the car. You find, find out that the old, the old, the old lady's dropped her uh, money 
so they need to find them and uh, take the money back to them with this one of the, one of the purses. So while they're doing that, they uh, run into an old friend who there is a human rights um, lawyer who's um, in trouble and she might lose her license and she's talking to them and um, they're talking about the various human rights violations in Iran and things like that and how, how do we deal with them and what, how are people dealing with them in Iran at the time and that's pretty much it, at the end they go and find the women, they give the money back to the women but while they're doing that someone attacks and destroys the taxi that's the film, I mean that's the, all the incidents in the film it's, but it's, it's all about how it's done though, I mean it's, it's, it's done very calmly, there's shots of the taxi, of the various cameras he's going to taxi, he acts as if this is just a a typical, this is a day in the life of him being in the cab. Um, obviously it's um, planned out though, we know the all actors playing this. There's another scene I forgot to mention where someone comes in the cab and the husband seems to have, uh, husband and wife, and the husband seems to have been, uh, been in an accident and so they're worried she might die and they're worried he has to do this well to, on a phone so that his brothers don't get the um, get all his world of possessions in case he dies, so his wife gets them. You know, and it shows you the kind of um, very kind of masculine culture in Iran and how women's rights are not taken very seriously. So you have all these things going on, and it's showing you all the problems in Iran from the ground level of people who have to live there rather than from afar, you know, as judging them as people outside of the country. What's great of the film is it just shows you how, as I said last time in the, uh, the other film I, I talked about him was like, you're seeing people in real life and you're seeing people who come from a completely different culture than you, but you actually just start to see them as not the people you would interact with in your home area because ultimately people are people and everyone's kind of the same in some way. There's always something that you can interact with here. There's, here the old women in the back of the, back of the cab, similar like to your aunties, you know, like the guy who's the, the kind of dealing with DVDs, that sounds like any slightly sketchy person you ever, you ever met, you know, we've all met them, you know, the friend who is having problems with his neighbours, that's easy to, you know, understand, everyone has that, you know, um, you have the niece, that's fine, uh, that's something most people understand. The people who have the accent, everything is something you can identify with and how it's done and it's just every so often they drop a lot of hands of how difficult it is, it's like everyone's trying to own their lives but the kind of overlords of uh, the country have certain laws in place that actually make it much more difficult than it really should be but they have to just live with it, they just have to get on with it and deal with it and it's about their lives, how do you deal with this because it's not every day like 1984 oppression on you. Like most people live their lives, go to the park, go and do this. Even people want to deal with the Islamic rules of the covering the hair and things. They do it as if well, that's just what you do. It's they're not mourning about not bring it up all the time. I mean, a lot of the kind of headgear is just worn as if the way women in the West wear like shawls in their head, like scarves in their head and things, just to because it's cold, you know. It's not really done up as if it's anything to comment on. It's just every so often when you see, when you see the little girl, the niece with it on, it feels a bit weird because she, she seems very young to have all this um, covering her hair. But that's just the culture and you get used to it pretty quick. And it becomes this very humane story about a, a country, and just showing a country under this pressure about how people just try and keep living their lives and try and be humane to each other and try and be decent to one another and that's the kind of point of the film is people are still trying, even under bad circumstances people try to live their lives and try and have decent lives and behave decent to each other and yeah there are problems but they're just trying to go on with their lives, they're, not, they're just not trying to uh, like the, anything political comes across from people talking and seeing what they are, what they're about it doesn't come from having speeches about this or that, it's just like this is what affects these people here, here and here. And it's subtly put in like this affects this person, this affects that person, this is why it affects this person, this is how they would think. And it's just showing everybody 
from the outside world. I said, I feel now what life's like in the country. And it's sort of like life in any other country. It's just like, it's an industrialised area. People have cars, people have, um, there's a variety of um, culture, there's a variety of the different aspects of the culture. Some of it's modern, some of it's more old fashioned. You know, any cities like that. You know, some people uh, go towards like the more modern up to date stuff like cameras and things, and other people don't. And even with the cameras, they've got the torn a bit of various things that have to do with the cameras, if, otherwise, you won't get any acceptance. Like, you, you need to. See, see all, do all these things within your films, otherwise you won't get accepted. So it sounds a bit like Russia in the early part of the 20th century where filmmakers lived under these really strict instructions. And it's like, well, you can do all this, you can go against it, but you're not going to get anywhere with it. And what I try to project is some image that's nothing to do with real life. And the joke is, that's nothing to do with real life, uh, why would you do it? There's other little bits, like the little girl, when she, when he leaves the taxi to go to the toilet, she interacts with this little boy who's in the streets, pretty much stealing stuff. She's tried to give him a lesson, telling him, you shouldn't do that, you should uh, do this, this and this. She's a little girl and a little boy, and she's telling him what's what and all the rest of it. It's really cute and really funny. There's tons of little things like that in the film, and it's wonderful to watch. So I'd highly recommend Taxi to Run. I don't want to see much more about it. It's just a wonderful little film, it's really well made, it's really worth watching, I'm sure we'll find it fairly cheap, you know, just go on Amazon, you'll probably find it's uh, third party quite cheap. It's wonderful, it's really worth seeing, it's very humane and it's it's like 18 minutes long, it's not very long either, but it, does, it feels like it flies by, it's really well done, it's really wonderfully done, terrific acting, everyone knows what they're doing, nice to understating, wonderful film. I hope you enjoyed that, I'll be back soon with another video. Like and subscribe, comment, I'm trying to to see that, obviously I forget most of the time, but it'll be nice if you did so. Keep it bye.